Hello, I'm Jacob Kruger, and this is the Write Your Screenplay Podcast. Let's talk about TV Bibles. Today, we're going to be answering the question, what is a TV Bible? Why is it important? What does your TV Bible need to do? And how do you know if your TV Bible is actually working or not? Now, there's an interesting history in TV Bibles. Back in the day, the Bible used to be a document that was put together by a young staff writer or a story editor or an assistant. It was a cheat sheet for new writers when they came on to a long-running show. For example, Jerry Prezigian, who teaches our TV comedy writing workshop here at the studio, he's an Emmy award-winning showrunner. He came up on shows like The Jeffersons, The Golden Girls, Married with Children. And these shows ran for a really long time, which meant that often they would lose their original staff writers as those staff writers moved on to bigger and better things or different things. And a new flock of staff writers would come on. And these staff writers hadn't necessarily watched every episode of the Jeffersons. They didn't necessarily know what had happened, what was happening, what could happen, what couldn't happen. They didn't necessarily fully understand the engine of the show. So the Bible was a document that was an internal document. It wasn't a sales document. It was an internal document, a cheat sheet that these writers could read, like a training guide, and to help them realize, oh, I get it. This is what needs to happen on the show. This is how the show works. This is the secret recipe, the secret sauce for the show. But today, a TV Bible has evolved into a different kind of creature entirely. Today, a TV Bible is a sales document. And what that sales document is intended to do, if you imagine your pilot is the thing that gets the big fish to swallow the hook, the Bible is the thing that sets the hook and reels them in. So without a great pilot, the idea of writing a TV Bible is just silly. Uh, Unless you are already a famous writer, the chances that you can sell an idea with just a TV Bible are close to zero. The producer is not just buying the idea, they're buying the execution of the idea, and they can only see that execution in the pilot that you write. So the most important element in selling a TV series is having an amazing pilot having a pilot that has a clear voice, a clear point of view, having a pilot that feels like something we have not quite seen before, uh, having a pilot that is disruptive in some way, that grabs someone, shakes them a little bit, grabs their attention, and takes them on a journey, and most importantly, allows them to fall in love with your characters, with your world, makes them want to invite these people back into their living room again and again and again and again. And that doesn't mean your pilot has to have nice characters. If you think of shows like Breaking Bad or BoJack Horseman, these aren't nice characters, but they're fascinating characters going on incredible journeys. It also doesn't mean that you have to have really dark characters. If you think of a show like Ted Lasso or Mrs. Maisel, these are incredible shows that have lovely characters at the center of them. So, What's important is not whether your character is nice or mean, dark or light. What's important is that they are a captivating character going on an incredible journey, surrounded by a cast that's like a family, that's a family that you want to connect to week after week after week after week. But a great pilot does even more than that. What a great pilot also does is it captures a blueprint for what the series is going to be, so that just by watching the pilot, an experienced producer should be able to go, oh, I get it. This is how you make the series forever. This is how you make the series work. This is what I have to brainstorm or imagine to generate the series for five seasons, for 10 seasons, for as long as I want to run it, I can 
keep on generating ideas in the same way, in the same format, and this thing can run forever. So a Bible, uh, so a pilot is this incredible thing that's at once doing all the work of a feature film, right? Taking a character on an incredible journey that changes them forever, launching them into a world, captivating an audience and taking them along for the ride with them. So it's doing everything a feature film does, but it's also doing something else at a more meta level, right? Which is it's going, this is how it works, guys. This is how it works. This is the shape of what this show looks like and how it's put together. So the average executive is going to read your pilot. And if your pilot is really good, if your pilot's really working, they're going to go, I love this. And I get this. I think this is going to work. But then, because producers are human, and especially at the beginning of your career, you're usually not actually getting your script read by the person who can say yes. You're getting your script read maybe by their assistant, maybe by their director of development, maybe by a junior producer, right? You're you're getting the script read by somebody who's got to run it up the chain of command, right? Who's got to pitch it and pitch it and pitch it again and get feedback and that person is early in their career, which means they're often making mistakes, right? So they might have pitched a show last week and their boss chewed them out and told them there was no engine. This isn't going to work. They might have pitched a show a couple months ago that that they thought was going to be so great. And then they found out it didn't have what it took to please, you know, maybe it rose two levels, but it didn't get all the way up to the guy who says yes, or the woman who says yes, right? They didn't make it all the way. And so and because they're early in their career, they're, they're terrified, right? They don't want to lose their job. They don't want to pitch something their boss doesn't like. They don't want to get chewed out. They, want, they don't want to be wrong. And so what happens is they first, they read a great pilot and they get excited just like you would. And then just like you have self-doubts, producers have self-doubts, agents have self-doubts, managers have self-doubts. They go, is this going to work? Is this really going to work? Am I right or am I wrong? And that's the first thing that your Bible does. Your Bible goes, you were right. Not only did you properly guess how this series was going to work just by reading the pilot, but look at all the other cool tricks I have up my sleeve. Look at all the other exciting turns that are coming. Look at how much is promised that you didn't even see yet that I'm going to deliver. Look, I've got the secret recipe. I've got this all worked out. So in your first level, your, your Bible just says in a nice, short, sweet document, yo, dude, I got this. I understand it. I've already figured all this out. You don't have to do it. The second thing your Bible does is it makes it much easier for that junior producer, that coverage reader, that development executive, that junior agent, right? It makes it so much easier for them to pitch it to their boss or to the talent they're trying to attach or the director they're trying to attach or the financing they're trying to, to attach. Because remember, these people are reading hundreds of scripts, hundreds of Bibles, hundreds of ideas. They're getting barraged by it. And it might be two weeks before they actually get to go pitch your pilot to their boss which means they're probably not going to read your pilot again. They probably don't have time to. And they've probably already forgotten a lot about your pilot as they have gotten themselves ready reading a bunch of other things that they need to pitch. And now they've got to go pitch this thing that's kind of vague. The other thing is, you know, we assume that everyone who's a producer or an agent or a manager must be incredible at sales, but this is actually not true. Especially early in their careers, many aspiring, emerging producers, agents, managers, they're still learning the ropes. They're still learning how to pitch. So what the Bible does is the Bible gives them a quick cheat sheet where they can go, oh yeah, I got this. That's right. Oh yeah, that's how you pitch it. Oh yeah, that's how I talk about that. For this reason, you want to make sure your Bible is short. I always feel sad for writers who write really long Bibles because the longer the Bible is, the harder it is to write, the 
more the, the person can potentially object to, but also the less helpful it is. Because a nice, short, sweet Bible, two pages, four pages, right? A nice, short, sweet Bible allows a newer producer to quickly read, remember, oh yeah, that's what it is. Oh yeah, that's how I pitch it. They can read it in a couple minutes before their meeting and go totally nail it when they pitch their boss. The third thing a Bible does is it gives your young executive that you've just pitched a document that they can pass, pass up to their boss. That that boss can pass up to their boss and up to their boss until you finally get the person big enough to actually greenlight the project. So you're basically giving people a cheat sheet. Number one, yes, you were right. This pilot's as good as you think. Number two, this is how it works. And guess what? It was even cooler than you expected. And number three, you don't have to reread it and formulate your own pitch. This is a cheat sheet to pitch my script to literally anybody you want because I've distilled everything that's awesome about my series, the way the engine works, the way the structure works, the secret sauce, the formula, the way the characters connect to each other. I've put all of that, distilled all of that into a short, sweet, powerful document. The next thing that a Bible does is if you're going to create a pitch deck, the Bible is basically your cheat sheet for a pitch deck, right? It's the concepts that you want to develop as you are building your pitch deck. Now, your pitch deck should have far fewer words than your Bible. Your pitch deck is designed to create a feeling of images. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What's the mise-en-scene, right? Who are the actors I might cast in these roles? But what the Bible does, it gives you the structural elements that you're going to use to cultivate your pitch deck. Pitch decks are about bullets, not about paragraphs, right? So a pitch deck in a way is an even more distilled version of your Bible. And what those bullets do, by keeping it really simple, here, here's one idea per slide. What it does is it gives you the freedom to pitch your script, but to be flexible as you pitch so that your your listener isn't reading your pitch while you move your mouth so that rather they are seeing something cool that sticks in their mind and then they're hearing you. And because you haven't locked yourself into text, you can be flexible. If they look bored by the, you know, the, the lover in your script, you can move past the lover and get to the mother, right? If they're fascinated by the lover, you can drill deeply in and talk about all the complexities of that relationship. So the beauty of having a Bible is it kind of reminds you, this is what it's about. This is how I talk about it. This is how I put it together. The final value of a Bible, the final thing that's amazing about a Bible is a Bible helps you rewrite your pilot. Because invariably what happens when you've written your pilot and you start to sit down to write your Bible, you are going to realize, holy crap, a lot of these ideas are not in the pilot yet. Like, As I start to make my Bible better, I might realize this character, who I thought was just a throwaway, is actually going to play a major role in this piece. But hmm, she's barely in the pilot. I might need to do a rewrite. Or you start, might start to realize as you start to develop the Bible and start to think about what the seasons of your show look like. Wow, you know, this idea that looks so good in the pilot, it's going to run out of steam after a while. Like I can't generate enough episode ideas before it starts to get boring or redundant. And you realize you need to give it a twist. And that might make you realize, wow, I need to go back and rewrite the pilot to set the seeds of that. Because remember, your pilot is the blueprint for everything. As you're writing your Bible, you might realize that, wow, my comedy starts to turn into a dramedy as I build these characters. Wow, maybe I need some tonal differences. So, for example, if you think about Ted Lasso, one of the great pilots of recent times, right? The first three quarters of the Ted Lasso pilot is just pure, silly fun. But then we get to the very end. We get that beautiful call to his wife. And suddenly this character who was just a clown, who does it, Roy Kent calls him Ronald McDonald, right? This character who was just a clown suddenly becomes humanized. 
and we start to feel his pain in a way that surprises us. So you might realize, oh, wow, I actually want to get into some deeper stuff. And you realize, well, I need to create that scene like Ted Lasso did. That makes me go, oh, oh, I felt something. So you might realize, wow, okay, I need to create that feeling in the pilot so that that becomes part of the blueprint. And if you think about Ted Lasso, that's what they do with all the characters. All the characters start out cartoonish. And then they get humanized as the show develops. Each episode is loaded with laughs and fun. But each episode finds a way to kind of pull your heartstrings a little bit. What they're doing is they're actually replicating the formula of that pilot again and again and again, episode after episode after episode, so that every episode of the show feels both the same and also different. So what actually happens is the pilot and the Bible become two different sides of the same coin. They start to have a dialogue between each other where changes you make as you edit your pilot start to have an effect on your Bible and changes you make as you edit your Bible start to have an effect on your pilot so that the two documents start to speak to each other, complete each other, carry each other forward. And this becomes the core of your sales pitch when you are delivering a script, both the verbal pitch and the pitch that you actually deliver to a producer. A really strong pilot that goes, yo, this is what the story is. And then a Bible that goes with it that goes, and here's how it works. And yes, you were right. This is as cool as you thought. Now, there are a million techniques that can go into building a great TV Bible. In fact, I teach a four-week class, my Write Your TV series class, that is all about understanding how to write a great pilot Bible combination, where we look at some of the greatest series of all genres, comedies, dramas, dramedies, miniseries, limited series, everything in between, to really understand what are the elements of a great show, a great engine, and a great Bible. So we can't get into all of that in one podcast, but I do want to give you the most important element of a Bible. And this is the one that is most often forgotten. A TV Bible needs to feel like the show. I'm going to say that one more time because it's such an important thing. A TV Bible needs to feel like the show. Your TV Bible can have all the elements of the show put together in a perfect, clear formula. But if it reads like a recipe, it is not going to work. The Bible needs to feel like the show. If the show is funny, the Bible needs to make us laugh. If the show is dark, the Bible needs to disturb us. If the show is complicated, the Bible needs to be complicated. If the show is twisted, the Bible needs to be twisted. It needs to feel like the show. It needs to capture the tone of the show. And of course, it also has to capture the elements of the show and how they're put together. But remember, the Bible is no longer a cheat sheet for existing writers. The Bible is now a document you use to sell your script. And buying a screenplay is not a purely rational decision. Yes, you have to deliver the thing the producer is rationally looking for or you're screwed, right? You have to deliver a show that's got legs or the producer is going to go, well, it's a great idea, but how do I make it work? You've got to deliver the practical, but it's not because of the practical that someone buys a show. Think about how much money it takes to build a show. Think about how many years of work it's going to take this producer to deliver this show. Think about if it's successful, how many years the producer is going to be working on this show, giving their life to this show. And you start to realize that buying a show, just like buying a screenplay, just like buying any piece of art, is not a purely intellectual decision. It's an emotional one. It's a decision that comes from feeling. It's a decision that comes from, I need to have this. And that is why both the pilot and the Bible need to feel not just like this episode, but like the whole show. The feelings of the show must be contained in the Bible and they must be contained in the, in the pilot. And together, they need to feel like a part of a whole so that when a producer reads it, they get that 
feeling again. They go, oh yeah, that's why I wanted it. That's why I needed it. So check out my classes if you want to learn more about the technical aspects of the Bible. But in the meantime, ask yourself this question. Does my pilot feel like the whole show or just like the pilot? If it doesn't, it needs a revision. Does my Bible feel like the whole show? Or does it feel more like a technical document? If it doesn't, it needs a revision. So happy writing, enjoy your Bibles. And if you are enjoying this podcast, then remember to check out Jacob Kruger Studio. We have incredible programs, mentorship programs that will pair you with professional writers one-on-one or in a small group who will mentor you throughout your career, read every page you write and be there for you to turn you into a professional writer. We have incredible foundation classes for those of you starting out. And we have my answer to grad school, my master class, where we spend a full Sunday together every month online, learning the ins and out of screenwriting and TV writing, structure, storytelling, and all that good stuff. So come check it out, writeyourscreenplay.com.